Hey, y'all, it's shopping season. Okay, when is it not shopping season? But still, listen, you know that you want cute, thoughtful gifts for Christmas for people you love, and I am here for you. I've got a new online store with cute new merch, autographed books, and some of my favorite pieces from one of my favorite brands. In fact, I signed every single book just for you, which I have never done in the history of ever, but it's amazing because now you can get a signed copy for you or a gift for a friend or both. Go to christywright.com slash store to start shopping for those thoughtful gifts you've been looking for this Christmas season. That's christywright.com slash store. Hey everyone, and welcome to Get Your Hopes Up. I'm Christy Wright, and I'm so glad you're here. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by power of the Holy Spirit. Our God is the God of hope, and He wants you to overflow with hope. So let's start our week by getting our hopes up again. Now today, we are talking about transitioning between seasons. So as you know, because I have talked about it extensively, I've gone through a season of testing and trials and wilderness over the last one to two years. Now, your timeline may not be the same. Your struggles may not be the same. But I'm seeing a real pattern in the body of Christ where so many of us have gone through a really difficult season. So as I give examples today and as I tell my stories today, I hope that you can apply this to you depending on what your season has looked like and how long it's lasted. But I'll tell you for me, it has felt discouraging. That's the best word I could give you. It has felt really difficult and really discouraging. The analogy I keep using is quicksand. It's one of those things where I feel like I've done everything right and I'm still going nowhere. I'm using all of my best business practices. I'm using all of my wisdom, skills, talents, experience, discernment, all the things. I'm fasting, I'm praying, I'm in church, I'm in the word, wise counsel, all the things you know to do to bear fruit in your life are not working. And let me be really clear out of the gate here. God's presence has been more powerful than ever. So it's not that I feel distant from God. In fact, I have felt like in this season, I am right where I'm supposed to be, which if you're in a season you don't want to be in, is some bad news, y'all. That's some tough news. That's a tough pill to swallow because you know you're so close to the Lord and you're right where you're supposed to be. And it's so stinking hard. It's hard. You're doing all the right things and nothing's working. And somehow you're right where you're supposed to be. Well, one of the things that I've noticed is this is a pattern in a lot of people. Maybe it's true for you as well, where you have just been discouraged. This season has knocked you down. It has exhausted you. It has defeated you. It's made you want to give up. It's made you feel hopeless. It's made you not want to try. And as I talked about a few weeks ago, I'm really sensing that we are coming out of this season. We are coming out of this season of testing and trials and quicksand. We're coming out of the wilderness. We're coming out. That season is over, but we're not in the new season yet, which means we're in a time of transition. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about what goes on in a time of transition, what to expect and what we need to learn and do in this time. Well, interestingly enough, at the time of this recording, we're kind of in a season of transition right now because we're getting ready for Christmas. Christmas is not here yet, but we're getting ready for it. Now, I don't know about you, but I'll tell you in my house, when it is time to decorate for Christmas, you better believe that I'm going on a garbage bag rampage through the house. Like it is time to purge clear out some junk, clean up the rooms, straighten your desk, straighten your bookshelves. Let's get rid of all the trinkets from Chick-fil-A kids meals. We are going to clean up because I'm not about to get all these bins out of the attic with beautiful garland and cute little snowman decorations and your personal miniature Christmas tree to put in your room that is full of junk. So let's just go ahead and clear it out. So that is what I did a few weeks ago when we got our Christmas decorations down. Y'all, I went room by room with my kids and I was ruthless. I'm talking garbage bag for the trash. We've got a separate box for Goodwill. We are donating, purging, trashing. We are cleaning up and clearing out to get ready for the new season, to get ready for the new decorations, to get ready for the fun, exciting things that are coming. I'm not about to add a bunch of decorations to your room that is full of junk. So 
When we're getting ready for the Christmas season, we want to clean up and clear out, but we really do this a lot of times in life, don't we? Like think of spring cleaning. You're getting excited about the fresh air, the nicer weather. You open the windows. You let some fresh air in your house. You clean up. You clear out. You're probably in a rhythm of cleaning up and getting ready and preparing for a new season already. We do this in our homes. You might do this with your schedule where you're kind of having a a purge of your schedule before you go into a new busy season and you add new things to your plate. This is a normal rhythm of our lives. And what's interesting is many of us are going through a transition between seasons spiritually. We're going through this in-between time between leaving behind the wilderness, leaving behind the past, the old, the discouragement, the quicksand, the trials, and the testing, but we're not quite in the new season. The old season is ending, but this is a process. It's not a light switch moment. This process of transitioning can take weeks or even months, depending on your story and what God is doing in your life. But what you were going through, the testing and the wilderness and the struggle and the faith building and the obedience and the difficulty, two steps forward, 10 steps back, quicksand, that is ending. It's over. It's behind you now. So now you're in this transition between seasons and you're not quite in the new season yet. You're standing at the threshold. You're standing at the doorway. You haven't walked through yet, but you're right there. And just like I clean my kids' rooms, getting ready for the new Christmas decorations, you are probably sensing that it's time to clean house. It is time to clean things up, to get ready for the new season. It is time to purge, clear out, clean out. You are feeling like you need to let go of some old things from this last season before you go into the new one. So here's what's going on. You know you need to let go of some old things from this last season before you go into the new season, but here's the problem. You have no idea what to let go of. You're hearing it everywhere. Let go of the old, let go of the old, let go, let go, let go of the old to be able to take hold of the new. And you're like, yes, Lord, absolutely. I want to, I want to let go. I want to let go. I want to let go of the old. The problem is I have no idea what you want me to let go of, Lord. I have no idea. What is it? Is it relationships? If so, who? If so, what does that look like? Is it habits? If so, which ones? What habits? I'm willing to do it, Lord. I just, I just don't know. Is it commitments? Like, Lord, show me what it is. What is it? I want to do what you want me to do. I want to let go of the old so I can take hold of the new. I want to be ready for this season of favor and blessing and promise. I want that, but I have no idea what to let go of. I don't know if this is you, but I can tell you it was me for weeks. I kept hearing and seeing and reading, let go of the old everywhere. Leave behind the old everywhere. Let go of it, let go of it, let go of it. But I had no idea what. Hey, listen, I know how frustrating it is when you are going through one of those seasons of discouragement. And maybe it's not even a season. Maybe it's just a hard week. Maybe it's just a really bad day. If you're like me, then when you're going through those bad times, it feels like it's always been bad and it always will be bad. But we know that's not the truth. It just feels like it when you're down. But the good news is there are things you can do, practical, tactical things you can do to pull yourself out of the pit and get your hopes up again. That's exactly why I created my free seven-day devotional, seven days to stop feeling discouraged. There are things we can do to get our hopes up and turn our eyes towards the one who is the author and perfecter of our faith. If you head over to getyourhopesup.com, you can get your free seven-day devotional. That's getyourhopesup.com. Then one day, as I was wrestling through these thoughts, not sure of what I should let go of, I felt the Lord speak to me loud and clear. And here's what he said. He said, you have to let go of your old way of thinking. And y'all, it clicked. Everything clicked. I got it. It was truly one of those light bulb moments where I immediately understood all of the implications of exactly what he was saying. I knew it in my spirit. I felt it in my heart and I knew it consciously in my mind. I understood what he meant. You have to let go of your old way of thinking. My mindset had to go. And I got to tell you today, yours does too. Your mindset from the past has got to go. Your old way of thinking has got to go. Complaining has got to go. Pity parties have got to go. Gossip and grumbling have got to go. Hopelessness and despair and discouragement and defeat 
have got to go. You cannot take these ways of thinking with you into your next season of promise and favor, y'all. You can't. You can't. Because I want to tell you something. No amount of money will fix a broke mindset. No amount of compliments will fix an insecure mindset. No amount of favor will fix a complaining mindset. Insecurity, doubt, pity parties, complaining, control, self-sufficiency have got to go. God does not promote, coddle, or advance this type of thinking. It has got to go. If you're standing at the threshold wondering what to let go of in between your seasons, there is a very good chance this word is for you. The old has gone. The new is coming. And while God is getting the new thing ready for you, you need to get yourself ready for the new thing. That means that you're going to shake off the dust and discouragement from this past season. You're going to lift your chin and put your shoulders back. This last season has knocked you down and kicked you while you're down, but you're not going to let that experience dictate your mindset, your way of thinking. You're going to let God's word and the truth of who he is determine your way of thinking and your mindset. Remind yourself that your father is the God of the universe and you are royalty and you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are fully known. You are completely loved. You are protected and provided for. Your God is infinite, all powerful, all knowing, sovereign, good, loving, personal and perfect. And he is looking out for you all day, every day. That is the truth that you are going to remind yourself of. That is the truth that you're going to have a mindset from. And just like we talked about in episode 217, when I taught you how you can retrain your brain to have different thought patterns, that is what you are going to think on. That is what you are going to set your mind on. That is what you are going to train your thoughts toward. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of of your mind. Renew your mind. Your mind should not look like the result of a bad season. It should look like the result of a good God. So if you want to take hold of the new, you've got to let go of your way of thinking from the past. You've got to let go of these habits and these mindsets, this defeat and discouragement. Poor pitiful me. We're just grasshoppers. I guess nothing good's going to happen for me. This is my story. Poor pitiful me. No. No, God is not promoting you from your pity party. You have got to shake off the dust of this last season. Get out of your pity party mindset. Raise your chin. Put your eyes on the author and perfecter of your faith. Remind yourself of the truth of God's word, the truth of who he is, who you are, and what he says about your future. That is on you to do. He will not do that for you. Your faith is your responsibility. Where you set your eyes is your responsibility. What you put your mind on is your responsibility. The Bible talks about this again and again and again. What to think on, what to meditate on, what to focus on. It tells you to do it because it's your job. It's your job. Y'all, I know last season was hard. I get it. I feel it. Trust me. In fact, just yesterday, I was a guest on someone else's podcast. And as I told some stories from this past season, I cried and cried and cried. On the video podcast interview, I couldn't even hold it back because those wounds are still so fresh. That experience is still so near to me. I still flinch when I feel like something bad's going to happen. It's, it's a, oh, I got to brace myself because, man, I, I really took some hits the last couple years. I know it was hard. I feel that. I get that. And it's over. It's over. I believe it for me and I believe it for you. And this is not just positive thinking. This is not just, oh, I'm going to believe it, claim it, speak it, own it, make it happen. Like I'm just somehow can control the future. I'm telling you, I'm seeing it everywhere in prophecy, in scripture, in the body of Christ. There is an ending of the wilderness. There is a new season of favor and blessing and promotion coming in the new season. And I believe that is for you. I believe you are listening to the show right now because that is for you. But it's your job. And my job, to change our minds. It's our job to change our thinking. It's our job to walk out of the pity party and lift our eyes and our head. And as Romans 12, 2 says, renew our mind. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. 
the pattern of this world of anxiety, the pattern of this world of fear, the pattern of this world of complaining, the pattern of this world of victim mentality, the pattern of this world of poor, pitiful me. No, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's your job. That's my job. And I believe that we can do it. And I hope that we will. You know, a few weeks ago, I shared a 60 second version of this concept on Instagram of just letting go of your old way of thinking. It was a thought I had as I was standing there making coffee one morning. I pulled out my phone, recorded a quick reel and didn't think much of it. And that one 60 second reel has been viewed and shared more times than anything I have ever posted in my entire life at Ramsey or after. And that lets me know that this has hit a nerve with you, which means it's a word for you. This is a word for you, for right where you are right now. This word about getting ready for the new season is a word for you. And as the Bible says, don't just listen to the word, do what it says. Let go of your old way of thinking, y'all. And when God is ready, he will move you into the new thing he's preparing for you. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for joining me for my new show, Get Your Hopes Up. I'm so excited to hang out with you every Monday to help you get to know God, get closer to him and get your hopes up again. Be sure to share this episode on Facebook and Instagram to help other people get their hopes up as well. And you can tag me at Christy B. Wright on Instagram and official Christy Wright on Facebook. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast channel so you never miss a new show. And then I'll see you next week for another new episode of Get Your Hopes Up. Get your hopes up.